Well, good morning. Can you believe it? It's the last Tuesday of April already here in 2022. Day is Tuesday the 26th. And I'm Pastor Bruce Kishnick, Senior Pastor here at Grace Lutheran in New Albany. Um, the title for our meditation today is The Liturgical Knife. The reading is from Mark 16, beginning with verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He is risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. On Easter morning, at the 1030 service, we had a full house, and that was a joy to see. And so we had a large communion. So I was working the line on the pulpit side of things, and as they were beginning to bring the people from the very back pews up to the front, I was running out of wafers on my plate. And so I gave out the last wafer just as my son-in-law, Nick, was next in line. So I, I sort of gave him a, wait a minute, and I went up to the altar to get more wafers. Well, when I got up to the altar and I looked into the ciborium, the ciborium, that's the proper word for the little canister that we keep the loose wafers in. Well, the ciborium was empty. But as we always do, there was a sleeve of more wafers under the missile stand. And so I took that in my hand and I began to attempt to open it. Now I say attempt because no matter how I turned that, no matter how I tugged on it, even resorted to using my tooth to try and get a start on that wrapper that was around those hundred wafers. For the life of me, I could not get that thing open. At that point, I would have given my back teeth if I would have had a scissors or a little knife there to open that package. I couldn't get it open. Fortunately, Brad Farber was the elder working with me, and he saw my discomfiture, and he came to my rescue. He came up to me, and I said, I can't get this package open. And he said, do you need a knife? Well, that was the first that I remembered. I had a pen knife in my left pants pocket. But, of course, I had all my vestments on, and I had to get through them. And then I had the transmitter for the microphone was on top of everything in my pocket. And so I dug in there, and I could not get a hold of that little knife. Fortunately, Brad reached in his own pocket and pulled out a jackknife and he sliced it open and I was able to pour all the wafers into the ciborium and we got back into it. And of course, as I came down, there was my son-in-law, Nick, and all the rest of my family, my son, Dan, and my wife and my daughter, and they were all in line and they all had a bird's eye view of my discomfiture up there. So of course, every one of them came by with a big grin on their face and when I got home, they said, had a little trouble with that wrapping, didn't you, Dad? Yeah, I had a little trouble with it. Now, Pastor Woods was totally unaware of my predicament. He had his back to me the whole time. And so after the service, I told him about it. And then I said, we need to add something to our communion wear. And he said, what's that? And I said, we need to add a liturgical knife. I said, we need to have a little knife up there so that if ever one of us is in that predicament again, we can get ourselves out of it. A liturgical knife to open what we could not open. We just heard in the reading, on Easter morning, as the women are coming to the tomb, it occurs to them that they don't have enough muscle power between them to roll that stone away from the entrance to the tomb. And so they question each other and they say, who will roll the stone away for us? How to open that tomb? You know, that's a question that has baffled humanity from the beginning of human, and human beings. They've all wondered the same question. Who will roll the stone away from our graves? The ancient people, they 
buried their dead with foodstuffs and various tools so that they would have available things for the journey to the afterlife. Of course, uh, the, uh, the Egyptians took that to the nth degree by building those huge pyramids for some of their, their kings, and they had every kind of tool and, and conveyance imaginable. And sometimes, sometimes, they even buried them along with their wives and servants so that they would have everything they needed in the afterlife. And then there was that ancient Chinese emperor who had a whole army of clay warriors built so that he would be the power broker in the afterlife. And all of those people were pursuing the same question. They were all pursuing that same thing, making an effort because they didn't have an answer to the question, who will roll the stone away from our tombs? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ we have an answer to that. Who will roll the stone away? Who will open our graves that, that we may be come out of there? Who will free us and give us a real life in the afterlife? Well, we know and confess that there's none other than Jesus Christ, him crucified and him risen. That was the joy of Easter morning. It's a reminder, not only do we, do we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, but we celebrate our resurrection. Because Jesus overcame death and the grave, that means that that day will come when we will hear his voice and he'll say, come out. And just like Lazarus, you and I are going to come out of our tombs. We're going to come out of our graves. Wherever, wherever our ashes have been scattered, wherever we've been, you and I are going to rise from the dead and we're going to rise to new life. It is our Lord Jesus Christ who will call out our names and command us to come out. And as he himself came out alive and whole on his resurrection, so he will command us to come out in our resurrection. That's a big part of our Easter joy and our Easter celebration. Now, I don't know if we're going to add a liturgical knife to our communion where I'm thinking maybe we should. I was pretty frustrated with that thing that day. I could not get it open. But I don't worry about who's going to open my tomb. That question that the ladies ask, who will roll the stone away? That has been definitively answered by Easter morning. That we don't have to worry about what's going to happen when finally we're laid in the grave. That's not the end of us. That's, that's the joy and that's the power of Easter. That reminds us that because Jesus lives, we will live also. And so who's going to open our tomb? Well... We've got those comforting words, because I live, you will live also. Thanks be to Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Would you pray with me? Our Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you today, and we just celebrate Easter. We celebrate it for six weeks in the church, but we celebrate it every day in our lives because of what came about on Easter morning when you came alive out of that tomb. That was the death of death. That was the end of the tomb. That that indicates to us right now that we're going to live with you forever and we give you thanks for that because not a one of us deserves it or earns it but we re receive it through faith in all that you've done and so lord jesus we thank you and pray that you'd walk with us guide us by your eye continue to send your holy spirit to us through word and sacrament that we might always hold to the joy of easter and that we might celebrate it all the time Grant us your grace, watch over our loved ones, and we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the only announcement I've got today is that I want to ask you to please keep our confirmation class in your prayers. There's only six kids in the class this year, but now that Easter has passed, now we've got to start looking towards all of the things that are going to be part of their confirmation experience. So this coming Friday, we are off to our confirmation's retreat. And that part of that is for them to prepare themselves for Confessional Sunday. That's going to come on the 15th of May. And then their Confirmation Day on the 22nd. Um, so keep them in your prayers. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing what they can teach us when their Confessional Sunday comes. So God be with you. And we'll look forward to talking to you again on the first Tuesday in May. God be with you. Bye-bye.